Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Um, respected Sayyidi, forgive my ignorance. My question is during meditation, where does the inner eye focus when one is trying to negate oneself? Wa alaikum salam I think we have the whole thing, you have to email us on the steps of uh, tafakkur and especially in the Naqshbandi way is that you have to visualize yourself in the presence of the shaykh and that you're sitting in the presence of the shaykh and if you're not there yet then you visualize yourself at the Kaaba and that the light of the Kaaba dressing you and uh, visualize yourself with the, the shaykh is right in front of you and that his light is, is reflecting to your heart and that you're asking to be nothing and let the light enter into your heart and to begin to be like a satellite. That's what we talked about, the whole talk tonight was about that before you act. <clears throat> uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaamu Alaikum uh, Does fragrance of the attar we apply attract other people's negativity or nazar? Yeah, this, the, the fragrance is of uh, importance for, for your spiritual feeling, your spiritual energy and for women they're not to fragrant themselves because if they put a perfume on and they go out in public then you attract the attention of the uh, opposite. And uh, that was not the, the reality of the atar for women. So it was, it was uh, something that has to be guarded and careful because nothing that a woman should do to attract the energy and the nazar of people and that's why we talked first tonight about danger. That wherever they are in the, in the western world, whatever world, the eastern world the times are very dangerous, the energies are very dangerous. We don't know what the, the reality of these shots that they have taken, what type of energy it's putting into people, how are they trying to change the DNA of, of people, how, how, how is their anger? You know when somebody is not able to feed their family, their jobs have been lost, their businesses have been lost and then you're forcing them to sit at home because they don't really have a home. What type of crazy anger is going to come into people? And on top of that, what did they inject them with to make them angrier again even more? So all of this insanity of what's happening to people, we don't understand its effects. We as in humanity doesn't know what's about to be unleashed. So as a result of that these are more of a very precautionary time. But try not to, uh, to attract the attention that you don't need and you don't know how to get out of that attention. And for men the same, you're not supposed to fragrant yourself for everyone on earth to, to smell you. It's more for your meditation and your contemplation that you want to beautify the area of meditation and for your tafakkur and for your salah so that the angels that are coming in your salah they khushbu, they, they love the fragrance of it. The jinn that are coming to pray with you, they want the, the, the good fragrance and the good smell of that uh, insan, more from their soul and their heart but until then at least your outside can smell nice. So these are were all for spiritual. So Prophet described that the, the, the salah and the atr are, are dear to me. So these were the states of the salah and the reality of salah. To, to achieve meditation and salah and, and to achieve a stronger spiritual connection by fragranting oneself but not for, for public and the public to be attracted to and smell you and say, oh what is this and then that, that's the wrong use of these realities. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa you had mentioned earlier on the benefits of the rose quartz crystal during meditation. Does yeah. the amethyst crystal possess benefits as well? Yeah, all stones have a, have a zikr and a reality. Allah created everything with its reality. 
So they they have a, a, a reality, they have a zikr and we can't go through you know thousand stones what their reality are, it's not something that I've spent my life to focus on. But because of the tafakkur and the contemplation it is important the rose quartz that heats quickly. As a result of its nature to heat it has a nature to speed up your spiritual connection. So that when you're meditating and you feel the warmth of the stone it's activating the lataif on the hands so that they can feel the heat, they energize by their heat so that to be a catalyst in tafakkur. The turquoise is important for the ring for nazar and, and, and bad eye, the energy that it pulls on people to say, look at me and that's the job that it was supposed to do. And naqiq is a warmth that again it brings a warmth onto the lataif and is good for the opening of the heart. Those are the main. Now you want to go through every single stone and you can I do that, can I do that? That's from the nafs. Don't, don't worry about all the things that were not mentioned but implement in life what the shaykh did mention. That's a problem, we get a lot of emails like that. If I say the turquoise is good then I get five emails, what about this stone, what about that stone? But my question back to you is, why don't you just follow the stones that we recommended? Once you master that reality of why we said use the rose court, that should be sufficient. Now you just want to know you know 50 different stones that's something different but try to master what was given out, that's what's important that, oh I heard Samina wa atana, shaykh said rose quartz then I'm going to use it for my meditation, my tafakkur and, and master that process. And that's what's important, the nafs don't let it enter into everything and then question you know like Bani Musa's people that which cow, a red cow, was it a yellow cow, was it a he cow, she cow, what color was the cow? It doesn't help anything in the process but for sake of just understanding no problem but try to implement what has been given to us for our practices inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can you tell us about the, the difference in the schools, the different, school, uh, the different schools in Sufism like Chishti, Qadri, Sarwadi? No. <laughs> They're different, different schools. So. We were we all are raised as in Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah, we find that to be the the, the most high, most beatific, most powerful and uh, there are not many taps that are open of realities. We said that once you try to figure out the Muhammadan reality and who's teaching that reality, uh, I don't know which tariqahs you're going to find it in. What Mawlana Shaykh left open for Naqshbandiya and that uh, is a result of its connection with Imam Ali Salam and Imam Mahdi as a result of Imam Mahdi's sword supporting the tariqah then the knowledges are permitted to come out. Without Imam Mahdi's sword nobody can speak these realities because 10,000 people come to cut their head. Even they make intention to do that then the sword of Imam Mahdi will reach to them before they can get up in the morning inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can you please tell us about the concept of istikhara? The concept of istikhara? <laughs> yeah. That's uh, to, 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 to ask a question and to, to seek guidance from Holy Qur'an. So they, they make an intention, they read uh, three Suratul Ikhlas, uh, seven day istighfar I think, uh, I think different shaykhs have different uh, understanding and then they open Holy Qur'an and, and begin to look the first seven verses on the right hand side and read what is good for them. This alhamdulillah but when Allah send you to living guides the, that question is, 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 going to, is going to already be answered. Allah is sending you to guidance. 
So when Allah sends a person to guidance then He says, why you have to make istighfar? Ask your guide. So the guide will teach you that's what's important. So if you ask and say, okay uh, here are the questions I have, help me newmuhammad.com, most likely you'll get a response from us welcoming you for your first email. Then second email is that uh, meditation, that first learn how to connect your heart with the shaykhs, how to bring that light into your heart. And then slowly with this training of tafakkur and contemplation, this istikhar and istikhar this, this concept of, of needing to know, inshaAllah that light enters more and more into the heart so that these understandings and knowledges and, and the information begin to convey from the heart, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Forgive me, can we have a day off from the lentil diet or is it too nafsani? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the lentil diet, diet was interesting because on, on a lot of emails <laughs> that uh, can I add hot hot sauce, hot peppers to it? Can I can I do this to it? Can I do that to it? And yeah, the the purpose of the lentil diet, when we understand its intention, was to to break down this understanding of food and and eating to live and live to eat are two different understandings. Most people are 99.9% .9 of all people, they're living on this life just to eat and enjoy every meal possible, myself included. As soon as you enter into lentil diet, you eat to live. You don't want to eat anymore. So somebody has to come and tell you, you have to eat because you, you, you're not going to live. <laughs> so eat your lentils. <laughs> And then you try to be creative and then you fry the lentils and you make a lentil salad, then you, you, you put sugar and lentil desserts and, and you, can, you just stick with the lentil diet as much as you can. It's, it's voluntary you know, and if you want to quit, you quit, it's no, no problem. And then somebody emailed, is this the sunnah? Can you give me hadith? And this people I don't know where they come from, everything they're looking for hadith. Even one hadith you don't know it, why you want to look for hadith for everything? The lentil diet is, has nothing to do with the sunnah of Prophet you're asking to learn how to open your heart. This is from the way of awliyaullah who have been ordered into seclusion by Sayyidina Muhammad And in seclusion they were told not to eat meat because you take on the characteristic of the foods that you eat. So no seclusion meat is allowed. You can't have dairy products because of the energy of the animal or meat products. So lentil had a, had a reality as a heart softening. So as you eat the lentil and that's why all taskiyat and awliya they have a big dal you know for their seclusions. Also for their langar and their food was always a dal because it was a calming food to give to people. They don't prefer to serve meat on mass amounts because it makes the energy of people wild especially in their zawiyas. A lot of the reality of the dal and the lentil was to bring the softening of the heart and the taming of wild energies, animalistic energies. If you eat a lot of chicken you act like a chicken, you're picky on everything, picky, picky, picky like you're picking for the worms. And because the diet of the chicken is, is, is worms and wild chickens and they have the characteristic of that pickiness. And if they eat a lot of beef they're like grazing, like the cow they just want to graze all day and night they're eating something. And then the lamb is a very passive quiet creature and they carry the characteristics of a more calming creature. So yeah, everybody is, is what they eat. Seclusion then was based on no animal energy and to eat the, the lentil diet had enough protein and the servant would have the lentil diets and a few dates and tea, inshaAllah. But it's all voluntary so this is not a matter of you know, is this something, where's the proof of this? This is, this is the way of awliya, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How to have barakah in our time? Follow the tariqah. 
Follow the tariqah, there's a, we have talks on that on the website, anything you want you go to Nur Muhammad and type in barakah and what is barakah in your life? What do you do in life that would uh, make you think you have any barakah in your life? So the, the barakah are, are extraordinary events. You know the salah, making salah in our belief is, is not a barakah for you because Allah ordered you to do it. You know if you don't pray you're gonna have azab in your life, you know difficulties and punishments. But by praying don't necessarily feel that you have a barakah in your life because you, you followed Allah's order that is wajib that you make your salah, that you paid your zakah, these are mandatory so you can't be proud of you made your zakah. So all of these usul, these are mandatory but when you pray sunnah, yes that's an immense barakah because that's something you did from love. When you, you give beyond what Allah asks from you, this is an immense love. When you sacrificed all of those by saying, Ya Rabbi I'm going to sit and now do zikr where I could be out working and making money and doing my you know my, my, my life's uh, stuff but I want to stop for your sake and just sit to, to show my love for you. That is immense barakah and that can't even be understood that when you make the zikr of Allah what type of weight does that have, what type of love does that have. You make your salawats, you follow the tariqah, get the reflection of the shaykhs upon you, get the madad of the shaykh and all his shaykhs and all his ahlul bayt and all those whom are supporting that tariqah, those shaykhs, all of them now their nazar is upon that servant. And then we said before all of a sudden a love begins to enter onto that servant from the awliya above, from Prophet from Ahlul Bayt. That love that they put upon that servant makes that servant to be loved by everyone and that's barakah. When, when people like to hire you and you don't know why because you don't maybe even do anything at work and <laughs> they're still there, you know. People want to give you things, people give you discount, people oh, he hear something free. That's barakah in life because there's something about you they don't understand but you understand it's Allah's love. And when Allah loves you, Prophet loves you, Ahlul Bayt love you, Sahabi love you as a result this Divinely love is emanating upon that servant and that's, that's a barakah in life. Not the, the mandatory things but the things that we did out of love, Allah accept those love and Allah dresses that servant with love inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah what are the signs to know that the meditation practices are working? When the meditation is working, you're heating up, you're taking an account of yourself, you're feeling the presence of the, the, the shaykh's energy, is energy. You're going to feel your heart is palpitating and energy is coming and you're going to know it. <laughs> you're going to be hit by lightning. It's not. It's not something unknown, that's when you start emailing that I think you know, I'm having a heart attack, is everything okay? <laughs> yeah, because they're going to overtake the system. So when their light begins to come and the energies begin to come, the servant feels heated, feels an energy coming. It's not a philosophy at all, they'll feel the changes, the energies, they have to be consistent. You know, and so they're consistent and practicing and practicing they feel more and more energy, more and more energy until they become lit up and heated where their hands are hot, their neck is hot at all times. And when they're in meditation, they're in the zikr, they're in their namaz, they're at all times they're in a state of tafakkur and, and being heated up and being heated up and energized and that's, that's the reality of tafakkur, it's not at all a philosophy. Tamam inshaAllah illa shafa Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa ashabihi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqatina shpandiyyatul aliyya wa sayru wa saddatina wa siddiqeena al-fatiha <laughs>